Hey guys, you too here. So yesterday there was a bit of a mishap in the middle of the cast. Uh, basically, Rapid and I cast the very first game, which was Zoro vs. Lonely God. After it finished up, uh, we started getting into Love CX and Mr. Humor. However, at the start of this match, uh, OBS basically started malfunctioning. My internet connection was perfectly fine. I was, <clears throat> I was still on Skype and everything with Rapid. And uh, everything looked like it was going okay, except OBS oh, started stopping and starting and stopping and starting again. But uh, eventually, <clears throat> it looked like the stream was, you know, basically fixed and it was starting to stream again. It said it said that it was streaming on OBS, so the entire time Rap and I were sitting there, we were casting the game, and, you know, uh, 30 minutes later, when the uh, match was over, we go to look over and see the, the stream is offline the entire time. And so, without realizing, we were casting this entire match, and uh, it wasn't being broadcast to anyone, unfortunately. So basically, and I didn't have uh, uh, the match recording as well. So uh, essentially, I, when I put things on YouTube, or at least for the Gold Series, I've just been exporting them from Twitch. Uh, so in any case, the, this match didn't get recorded on anywhere. Basically, Rap and I were talking to ourselves on Skype, and uh, just for YouTube's purpose, for just to get this video on YouTube, so uh, for um, completeness sake, to get everything, uh, all the matches from the Gold Series onto my YouTube channel. Just gonna go over this match. Uh, obviously, I know the result, so I'm not gonna feign, you know, surprise or anything like that. I'm just going to go over the match, you know, ba basically do a bit of a match analysis, I guess. You know, I've done these in the past, I haven't done them in a while, but uh, we could do it for this game and also just kind of play by play, just to letting you guys know what's going on. So anyway, this game was uh, the second best of five uh, that we casted, or that we kind of tried to cast. Um, it's, it's a round of 16 of the Gold Series, and it's between Love CX and Mr. Humor. Love CX finished first out of his group, uh, Group B, which had uh, Fu Oliver, Shing Tzu, and Tiddler. And Mr. Humor finished second out of his group, uh, Group F, uh, with Zhang Bobura and Sword. Just a little more background, I suppose. Love CX won the Gold Series Fujo. And uh, also came in first in the China Championship. He actually double qualified for this event. Whereas Mr. Humor, he was the World Elite nominee. And uh, as you can see on the screen there, it was uh, Mage, Druid, Rogue, and Warlock for uh, Love CX. And Mage, Shaman, Warlock, Paladin for Mr. Humor. And both players banned each other's Mage. Uh, probably the reason for the ban on... Love CX's mage was because uh, looking at his lineup, it seemed like it might be Freeze Mage, and obviously that's a good you know deck to have against an aggressive lineup like the one that uh, Mr. Humor has. And uh, as far as the ban on Mr. Humor's mage, it's looking at his lineup, it was probably some sort of aggressive, you know, either Tempo or or Mech Mage, and uh, that does pretty well against Druid, probably better than even Zoo. Um, and then on top of that, you know. Uh, it's probably easier to, you know, get a win with something like Reno uh, against a Mech Mage. Um, if you're, I mean, basically you can, um, or sorry, not against Mech Mage, but against the other classes. Basically, if you just heal up with Reno, you're doing a pretty good job. But sometimes, you know, with a crazy Mech Warper start, you can get just, you can just steal a win before you're ready with any sort of AoE. So that's probably the reason going behind uh, Love CX going with the ban on the Mage. Uh, probably among other things as well. There might be, you know, mind games in there. Any case, uh, so we're gonna get to this game. I'm uh, look. I'm currently on the site of one of the Chinese, or uh, basically a Chinese site right now, looking at the VOD. And uh, the first game, obviously, as you can see on the screen, was between the Zoo of Mr. Humor and the Arena Lock of uh, Love CX here. And you can see that Love CX kept the Reno as hand, even though it's a six drop. Um, having the Reno in your hand basically allows you to play completely differently. And uh, it's a pretty standard keep if you have Reno, um, particularly if you uh, you know have no duplicates in your entire deck, which typically uh, Reno Lock does these days. And um, so yeah, that's basically why you keep, the reason why you keep it in your hands because it allows you to just have that in your back pocket every like the entire game, right? If you don't know you're gonna draw Reno, if you don't have Reno quite yet, then a lot of times you have to play overly defensively if you think you might die soon. Whereas as long as you don't die, you basically can play Reno whenever you want past turn six, and um, you know, you don't have to you know, so aggressively uh, clear your opponent's board, for instance. And so this game gets started pretty standardly. Um, it's uh, kind of unfortunate for Mr. Humor here that he doesn't have too much uh, damage on the board. A lot of times what you want to do against a control deck is you want to get your damage on the board first and then follow it up with more um, sticky minions like the Renewing Egg. But it doesn't have, you know, obviously the Flame Imp or 
as in like a knife juggler, so it just has to settle for a dark peddler here. And um, on the side of Love CX, basically just trying to control the game the entire time. This is a pretty favorite matchup for the Reina Log, uh, because basically you you, got, you go along, you have similar options. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Zoo has a bit more aggressive options, but as long as the Reina Log can kind of survive, and if it goes to the late game, there's no actual health gain for the Zoo. Whereas, obviously, there is a ton for the Reina Log. And although there's a lot of, there's a lot of threats in the Zoo, and even bigger threats, obviously, nowadays, nowadays being, you know, past few months, um, it doesn't it doesn't really help uh, when you get towards a later game and your opponents heal healing a lot and they have pretty, basically similar threats anyway. So this game is going a pretty you know standardly as I mentioned before, just uh, you know Mr. Humor developing the Rubian and all that good stuff, and then these abusive sergeants coming down, and just like standard trades back and forth, pretty obvious turns here. Um, just you know. Mr. Humor trying to develop a board and uh, Love CX trying to get rid of it. I think there is a tap into a mind control tech here if I remember correctly. Um, no real reason to uh, Shadow Flame or even just to heal bot here. Uh, you're still in a good spot. And this is the other thing, right? This is exactly where this comes into play, right? Uh, Reno, you can just basically tap in anything you want because if ever you get into a bit of trouble, you can just Reno. Um, so yeah, it does tap into my control tag, and uh, I mentioned this during our, you know, our cast that never got aired, but uh, it's definitely good to just play my control tag, even on a small board like this, just to steal something, because it is kind of a, uh, it's kind of nice, right, it's like an elven archer, but it develops like a 1-1 for you at the same time, uh, because you're killing a 1-1 and getting a 1-1 at the same time, even if you get the smallest thing possible, and the reason why you want to play my control tag earlier, even though you can get a pretty good my control tag later in the game, uh, potentially, uh, you know, by sealing a huge minion, which is, I mean, typically the zoo board is full, and then it's just full with a bunch of big guys. But the thing is, later in the game, uh, if you're relying on mind control tech to do that, you might not have the mana, for instance, for something like Shadow Flame. And so it's basically a YOLO, basically all in move with the mind control tech, and you have to get something bigger, or else you're kind of in trouble. Um, just mentioning, by the way, the faceless in the hand of Love CX indicates that it is the OTK variant of Reno Luck, where you try to kill your opponent. So uh, there's a few big minions, but less so because obviously you're running things like Arcing Golem and the Power Overwhelming. Uh, sometimes you run Power Overwhelming in non-OTK Warlock, but uh, it's less common. But uh, yeah, so Sylvan is hitting the board for Love CX again for the same reason that you can play Arena whenever you want. And this is a really interesting play by Mr. Humor. He basically just goes completely all in here. And instead of owling the Sylvanas, he says, you know, I can just owl this guy later, it's fine. And uh, even if Sylvanas uses Shadow Flame here, then he's not going to take my Rubian because I played the Rubian last. So I'm perfectly fine to just do this. And uh, Lovesias comes up with a pretty good play here, actually. Uh, what he does is he heals his Sylvanas and then Shadow Flames the Earth and Ring Forest here and then kills off the near Rubian. The reason why you heal the Sylvanas and not your face uh, is because, first of all, you're not going to die from 10 against a Zoo. Um, even if they. You know, somehow manage to get a Doom Guard off, and you know you don't uh, discard the Power of Whelming. Um, you still it's still only nine damage, right? So it's basically impossible for the Zoo to be able to burst you down from ten with no board, and um, so that's why you don't need to heal your face. And then secondly, if you don't heal your Sylvanas, and the Sylvanas just trades with the Nurubi and just dies, and it's really nice to have the Sylvanas in the field. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Love CX, um, Mr. Humor comes up with basically the best answer here, Knife Juggler and the Owl and the Owl and the Knife hits the uh, Sylvanas, which is unfortunate for him. And then I actually forget what happens here. I just know that Love never actually plays the Reno this game, even though he could. The point is he could play the Reno at any time, uh, but again, you know, dealing 10 damage is basically impossible for a zoo from nothing. So it makes sense not to go for that, so yeah, it just ends up being this ooze coming out here. And then uh, Mr. Humor plays some stuff, and then um, Love CX kills him from 14. So yeah, just the in game boss and onto the field. And the entire time I remember looking at this and thinking, like, oh, we could just Reno, like, why don't you just Reno? But then uh, it turns out that, um, you know, 4 plus 4 plus uh, 6 is 14. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, Love just takes the game by going with the. Um, with this, he double arcing golem doesn't even need the power overwhelming and just wins the game uh, with Reno and Healbot still in hand, which is kind of funny. So, yep, and that's basically how that matchup goes. It doesn't usually go that way. Usually, you know, the Reno has to um, 
actually Reno up at, at some point, <laughs> or, you know, basically played more defensively. I mean, you saw a lot of CX playing defensively there, but obviously when you can win the game, you obviously just go for it. And uh, he took a one-game lead in this series at that point. Uh, the Chinese casters, by the way, were Snowkiss in the center, 2-2 uh, two -two on the left, and Boor on the right. And uh, let's, let's see if we can just go to the next game, actually. All right, so the next game ended up being the... Um, Agro Shaman versus the, uh, I guess maybe I should show them the Mulligan. There you go. Uh, maybe not. <clears throat> so there you go. Um, obviously if you're the uh, Druid, you keep Innervate. You usually keep Keeper because you can take out either Knife Juggler or Whirling's Affomatic. Swipe is also pretty nice for removal as well, and also you want your own minion, so um, I think he kept this whole hand. Yeah, it definitely makes sense to keep this whole hand. But um, this game, uh, just spoilers I guess, but this game was kind of sad for the Shaman. <laughs> it was very, very sad. Um, you saw he picks up the Sir Finley Murgleton, so he actually has something to do on turn 1, which is kind of nice, uh, at least for here. And doesn't get anything at all. Um, Rogue is kind of bad because you want Doomhammer later anyway. Um, the mage is okay, but not the greatest. And from Love CX, he actually has a lot of options after picking up the Sarnassus. And I think he goes with the correct one. He ends up going with the Innervate into the Shade. And the reason is because, I mean, you could save the Innervate for the Keeper and maybe take something out, but you don't, you're not, uh, you don't know that your opponent's going to play something that you can go with the Keeper. Like, for instance, if he plays a Totem Golem, now you're kind of behind. And uh, just basically best to get the Shade out as quickly as possible. And uh, if your opponent, you know, silences it, then they're not silencing a taunt later, which is pretty nice. As you see, double silence coming ahead of um, Mr. Humor. And obviously, you don't really want double silence. You want to develop your board and, you know, get, get damage on the field as well. <clears throat> so this ends up allowing, you know, loot, uh, Left CX to develop his board this way. It takes out the Vinny Murgleton because every point of damage matters. And now this is just a horrible spot for... Uh, Mr. Humor. He was forced to draw cards in turn 2, which means he only has one mana now, and he has to choose between killing the Darnassus or the Shade, has, and he kills the Darnassus to slow down uh, Love CX a bit here. I think Love picks up something. He picks up Wild Growth, yeah. So I was able to play Wild Growth, at least gets to do something this turn rather than just Hero Power. And uh, <clears throat> he hits the face with his Shade. This game is pretty straightforward. Um, I think it uh, ends up being, yeah, Earthshock plus Tunnel Truck plus uh, Lepernum, I think. Or double lip or none. But, yeah, so basically this entire game, Mr. Humor tries to get stuff going, and he can't, because typically, I mean, it's, uh, you see Love CX, he has five mana, and, I mean, I think it's turn four for him, but he has five mana, and he um, is at 29 health still, or at least, I guess 27, it's going to be 26 after he uses his hero power. But he basically has board control, he's barely taking any damage, his opponent has taken more damage than him, and so therefore the Shaman can't really race, a lot of times, if you get a, a bit of damage on the opponent as the Shaman, you can just start you know, going face and ignoring their board. But if you're already at the same health, then it's probably not a good idea. And so he's basically forced to you know, um, use Crackle here and you know, start removing his opponent's board, which is just not the grace for him. And uh, I think Love actually goes with the Charge Drew of the Claw here, which makes sense. If you... Uh, if you put it in taunt, you're basically at the mercy of your opponent, and we can see that uh, Mr. Humor had a way to deal with that Jury the Claw just with the Lava Burst ping, and then you're taking four more damage, and then, I mean, it, it takes damage to kill this Jury the Claw in charge anyway, so it makes sense to just kill that guy off. I think it's Thorson picked up here for Love Takes, if I remember correctly, and he just plays it off and uh, tra trades with the Knife Juggler. And again, like you, if you get a few, even if you only have three cards in hand, if you get a few charges of Thoris, and it's really painful for your opponent because he could just die if you're uh, Mister Hammer. So I think he kills us off. Remember correctly, yeah. And again, one card in hand for Mister Humor. He has Earthshock. That's it. No damage. Um, he's already used one ancestral knowledge, so it's not like he can, you know, ancestral into ancestral into something. Um, you can basically maybe draw an ancestral and then get Doomhammer, but uh, the Sentinel dies. You know. Um, Shredder's put in the field. He picks the three mana one so that he can he hero power. Uh, most likely he's going to be able to, you know, fit in the other Shredder later anyway. I think it's at this point that um, Mr. Humor just concedes. I think, yeah, I think he concedes here. This is just a really sad game for Shaman. 
Um, I mean, <laughs> you, even if you start spacking or start throwing damage to the face, the Shredder hits you for four every turn for free. So, yeah, it's just a really sad game for Shaman there. Uh, not a good draw for Shaman uh, to start off with. And then Love CX had basically a really, really good draw as well. So, uh, that game just ended super quickly. Or as quickly as it can end when the aggressive player just dies. And then uh, game three ends up being the rogue versus the um, this versus the zoo. And this game ends up being better than the last two. <laughs> this one's a bit more back and forth. And yeah, it's kind of funny because we saw Lonely God in the first match of yesterday play rogue as well. And basically play a similar kind of lineup. Uh, minus, I mean, he played warrior, did Lonely God, but uh, Love CX did not. And yeah, so it's basically the exact same kind of thing from the first match. Um, if you look at my VOD, Zoro and Lonely God, then the you know, Zoro played aggressively and won that one, whereas Lonely God played defensively and lost. And we see here Love CX in a pretty good lead. And so, yeah, this is exactly what you want to do, by the way. Um, if you play Coin into Night Trickler, uh, what you're doing is putting damage on the board, and then you want to get your sticky stuff later. If you put sticky stuff on the board first, then Rogue can just ignore you, basically. You're not getting any damage. Um, even though, again, there's a lot of st big stuff in the zoo, and you can kind of win the Battle of Attrition sometimes if the Rogue just runs at a card draw. Uh, you do want to put pressure on, on them uh, so they don't get any big turns later, and they can eventually just erase you at some point if you don't do so. So, um... The reason why Love CX plays the Blood Mace Thanos is because he picked up that SI7 agent, and this gives him a better chance to be able to um, get backstab. So he has two chances for backstab here, and if he gets backstab, it's basically a blowout, and he kills the board and develops his own board. Uh, doesn't pick it up, but picks up the um, the Saucy Deccan. He actually goes for it this turn rather than saving for the next turn, where he could combo with the SI7 agent, and it's because he has a Tomb Pillager in hand anyway, which is a perfectly reasonable. Um, play to make on the next turn. And if you put this the Tomb Pillager on the field, then you can use the coin uh, with the SI7 agent later anyway. So it ends up working out. So again, you play the egg here rather than the two Void Callers because uh, you want more sticky stuff and it's really hard for the Rogue to deal with this. Um, much harder for the Rogue to deal with this than, you know, uh, those Void Walkers anyway. So, um... Love CX, I think he goes for the Deadly Poison into SI7 Agent here, if I remember correctly. Um, the nice thing about uh, doing this with the SI7 is if your opponent doesn't have Power Overwhelming, and usually you don't keep Power Overwhelming in your opening hand, um, they, uh, the opponent can't kill the um, the SI with the Egg, because obviously Beast of Sergeant doesn't kill it. Um, you could have something like, you know, Dire Wolf Alpha plus Abusive, but that's even less likely than just having Power Overwhelming. So it ends up being um, uh, just a defender of Argus here. And again, one one reason, by the way, uh, you could have seen Love CX go for the uh, Tomb Pillager. But this definitely makes sense to just kill off the um, stuff on board and uh, make sure that there's no good defender of Argus. He might have read into the fact that there was a defender of Argus. And so, you know, not... Basically, t taunting up a, an egg is pretty nice, but at the same time, you know, making a Flame Imp into a 4-3 is really dangerous as well. So it definitely makes sense to just... You know, not to go crazy and just play the Tomb Pillager, Tomb Pillager out there. And so Love CX plays this uh, this Drake out. Um, he could have attacked, but doesn't really make too much sense to do so. And I'm actually forgetting what happens here from um, Mr. Humor. I think he just plays... Right, he plays a, a Void Walker on the left. And then Defenders, the... Oh yeah, he defenders the egg and the void walker, and he kills off the egg and his defender against the Nerubiana, which I thought was kind of a curious play um, because it's really hard for Rogue to deal with this egg, to kill it, and then, um, you know, to kill it and then kill off uh, the Nerubian after it. But I suppose. Mr. Hume was a bit worried about the spell damage, and we do see that, you know, Fanites would have done a lot of work um, if he had left the uh, Azure Drake open, or alive, excuse me. So uh, that definitely makes sense, I suppose, in that, in re that regard. Um, Love 6 had a lot of options here. Could have gone for the Tomb Pillager and killed off the uh, 
Voidwalker <clears throat> and Reed Dagger, which is, I mean, as Rogue, it's always nice to have your dagger nice, just basically ready for any sort of uh, prep tinkers or just tinkers in general or anything of that sort. Um, but uh, instead, he goes for the Lotha plus the second Deadly Poison, going for the Tempo. Uh, I mean, even though he throws away his ki Deadly Poison, kind of, um, just to get a kill, uh, it, He's able to, you know, get Tempo back on the board and, you know, seize control of the board. 3-1, the 5-5 versus a 4-4, which is nice. And then back on Mr. Humor's side, obviously the uh, Implosion's really expensive, but he picks up this Void Walk, or Void Caller, excuse me, which is really a, a big pickup, because obviously the Mount Gannis in hand. Uh, but if he had had to tap into a smaller minion, that would have been obviously not quite as good. So, definitely a really good pickup there for Mr. Humor. And there's like the looming threat of this Melganus potentially. So here, um, Love CX, he goes for the backstab and the fan so that he can kill off the Nerubian with his SI7 agent to get that value trade there. It definitely makes sense. And then from there, I don't think he picks up anything. Yeah, picks up an SI, which doesn't really do anything. So he just plays a Tomb Pillager, kills the Nerubian, and hits the face. Um, you might suspect that your opponent might not have uh, a demon in hand because they only have two cards. But at the same time, the Melganus has been in hand for a little bit here. Um, so you can see why, you know, Love Six was basically afraid of that. And if any, anything substantial came out, then it would be a problem. Uh, whereas, essentially, only Doomguard really, you know, quote-unquote punishes you if you don't, uh, if you let your opponent, um, you know, trade themselves or sacrifice the, uh, the Void Caller themselves. In any case, it ends up being Mel again. It's obviously you tap last, you don't want a different demon coming out. And on top of that, you don't take any damage from the tap. So, um, that was good for him. But huge... Uh, huge pickup there on this app from Love CX. He could have maybe gone for a sprint and tried to get something like, um, uh, you know, prep sap after that, but uh, that sap is more or less game winning for Love CX. Um, oops, I might have spoiled this game. But uh, uh, it's, you know, without that, he would have been in a lot of trouble. And as it stands, he's in a really good position. So finally, there's a, a roll of four onto that. Uh, that uh, SI7 and it ends up being a prep sprint because uh, Love 6 wants to develop more stuff on the board instead of just doing nothing and picks up a Violet Teacher as well. Um, he goes actually with the Violet Teacher, uh, which is interesting. He could have gone for maybe a Shredder, which allows him to tinker a bit easier. Uh, but Violet Teacher is also has a lot, has more health potentially than the Shredder. Maybe he feels like the Shredder um, doesn't really trade too well with other stuff on the board. Uh, I don't. Know. It's just it's it's close, I guess. And if he felt like he didn't, he wasn't able to kill the point with Tinkers anyway. Then this ends up making sense, particularly since Morgan is hitting the board. But it does go face. Doesn't he? Only kills off one of the Imps and goes face, um, realizing that uh, the Imps don't really. I guess this is another reason why you don't. Um, you don't uh, use the email against because the trade here is kind of awkward. Um, you could, like, uh, maybe if, since Love CX knew that there was a Morganus in hand, Morganus now doesn't uh, allow the Imps to trade very well, um, but you maybe could have gone two into the Tomb Pillager and uh, one into the Shredder, and then you'd basically have a two drop left and you don't have lethal. So instead, Mr. Humor decides to go for this and, and not play all the Morganus and unfortunately discards the Morganus. And then it uh, goes for this play. Um, and I think... Uh, well, Love CX is lethal anyway, but he picks up Blade Flurry just to rub it in. But yeah, that ends up being the game. And Love CX advances to the round of 8. And he's going to go against Zoro next, which is pretty interesting because, like I mentioned, Mr. Humor and Zoro ran pretty similar lineups. As far as, you know, the aggression is concerned. So that was the match that uh, you guys missed if you tuned into the channel. Um, pretty quick and easy victory there by Love CX. Really unfortunate for Mr. Humor. Uh, obviously, Love CX is a really good player, um, and he played those games pretty well. But at the same time, uh, nothing could ever get going for Mr. Humor in those matches. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Let me just uh, pause the video really quick. And, uh, yeah, so that's all. Uh, oh, that's weird. But, um, oops, just get rid of this, I guess. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and, um, I hope this satisfies people's 
needs to uh, watch all the matches of the Gold Series, perhaps. And, uh, yeah, see you guys later.